Keep him honest with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's decision to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Here's what McCarthy told Breitbart News just a couple of weeks ago, quoting now, to open an impeachment inquiry is a serious matter and House Republicans would not take it lightly or use it for political purposes. He went on to say, if we move forward with an impeachment inquiry, it would occur through a vote on the floor of the People's House and not through a declaration by one person. So not through a declaration by one person is what he said. And to his credit, he's been firm on that point for years. Here he is in 2019 saying, quote, Speaker Pelosi can't decide on impeachment unilaterally. It requires a full vote of the House of Representatives. So Democrats, Republicans, it appeared it didn't matter to Speaker McCarthy. You don't just go around unilaterally launching impeachment inquiries. Well, here he is earlier today. These are allegations of abuse of power, obstruction, and corruption. And they warrant further investigation by the House of Representatives. That's why today, I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. So after years of saying one thing, today he decided another, calling on three House committees to run the proceedings and investigate President Biden and his family, specifically his son, Hunter. Now, as you likely know, many Republicans, perhaps most vocally the former president, refer to the Bidens as the Biden crime family. They've made plenty of allegations over the years link, trying to link the president with uh, his son's business activities. As for evidence, though, there hasn't been any. Here's Congressman James Comer, who chairs one of the committees now running the investigation on Fox News back in May after making some of those allegations. You don't actually have any facts to that to that point. You've got, you've got some circumstantial evidence. And the other thing is, of all those names, the one person who didn't profit is uh, there's no evidence that Joe Biden did anything illegally. We're at the very beginning stages of this, but uh, in talking with the informants that we have, uh, mm -hmm. some of the former Biden associates that nobody's heard from yet, uh, we know that Joe Biden was actively involved and we're still looking uh, for more bank records that uh, we believe will implicate Joe Biden's active participation in this at the end of the day. Now, that was back in May on Fox. And by midsummer, House Republicans were touting that they said uh, would be evidence from one of Hunter Biden's former business partners, a man named Devin Archer. And in his testimony before the Oversight Committee, Archer certainly agreed that Hunter Biden's family name helped in dealings with foreign businesses, including the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, who was paying Hunter Biden to be on their board. However, in closed-door testimony before the committee, here's what he said about whether he knew of any wrongdoing by then-Vice President Biden. The transcript, by the way, was published by the Republican Control Committee. Question, are you aware of any wrongdoing by Vice President Biden? Answer, no, I'm not aware of any. Question, so based on everything you saw, heard, and observed, did you have any knowledge of Joe Biden having any involvement with Burisma? Answer, no, not direct, no. Question, no involvement of Joe Biden with Burisma? Answer, no. That was the star witness who may have painted a not-so-flattering picture of Hunter Biden, but who also supplied no evidence whatsoever that his father did anything wrong, which takes us back to Speaker McCarthy and his 2019 tweet complaining about Nancy Pelosi's decision to launch impeachment proceedings against the former president over Ukraine. Quoting this time from point three, for Dems, this is all about politics, not about facts. Well, keep it honest, by that point, the central fact of the scandal had already been known for several weeks, namely that the former president had issued a veiled threat to withhold military aid from Ukraine unless President Zelensky said he was launching an investigation to smear Joe Biden. This time, Republicans have found no evidence tying President Biden to any wrongdoing. So why is Speaker McCarthy doing what he's doing? Well, one answer, in fact, the answer might be found in a video back in January. On the right, Congressman McCarthy during his arm-twisting marathon to win the speakership. On the left is Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who changed his vote from present to yes on the 15th ballot. In exchange, McCarthy agreed to a series of concessions to right-wing lawmakers, including a provision allowing a single member to force a vote to oust him. And for weeks now, members, including Matt Gates, have been pushing for impeachment. Last night, Congressman Gates said he would be speaking today on the House floor and would attack the Speaker for not complying with parts of that deal. Today, despite what certainly appears to be an effort to appease him and other conservative members, Gates did just that, dismissing McCarthy's impeachment talk as, quote, a baby step. Joining us now is Colorado Republican Congressman Ken Buck. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Two days ago, you said that the time for impeachment is when there's evidence linking President Biden to a high crime or misdemeanor. You said, quote, that doesn't exist right now. Do you still feel that way tonight? 
I have not seen any evidence that links uh, President Biden to Hunter Biden's activities at this point. I will be getting a briefing later in the week. I'm looking forward to uh, understanding more of what the Oversight Committee has uncovered. But at this point, I have, I have not seen that evidence. So Speaker McCarthy certainly doesn't have to hold a full House vote to authorize the impeachment inquiry, but he has always said that he would. He said so two Fridays ago. Um, is it clear to you what changed other than, you know, the threat from the Matt Gaetzes? Yeah, what changed is that he doesn't have the votes, uh, Republican votes, to, to pass a resolution to open an impeachment inquiry. Um, he, he, uh, they have been trying to get those votes. Um, I don't believe they have the votes. So why is he doing this? Well, because, well, th that's a great question. Why is he doing it? The, the three committees, the Oversight Committee, the Judiciary Committee, the Ways and Means Committee, are investigating. And they're investigating Hunter's, uh, Biden's activities. They should be investigating. They're uncovering interesting information. Uh, like I said, they haven't found that link yet to Joe Biden, if it exists. Um, but what he's, what uh, Speaker McCarthy is doing is uh, he has uh, President Biden on the one hand, uh, or I'm sorry, President Trump on the one hand, who is demanding that the House open uh, an impeachment inquiry and, and begin an impeachment of President Biden. And on the other hand, he has spending bills that are coming up and he needs the support of members of the uh, Republican conference to help get that uh, continuing resolution passed and appropriations bills. Yeah, I mean, in your opinion, does this impeachment inquiry take away from focus in the House on government spending and avoiding a shutdown? I, I believe it does, and I believe it was a shiny object from the beginning, and I, I think it was a mistake to start talking about the impeachment inquiry. I think it's a good thing that we aren't voting on it on the floor because we've got a lot of work to do if we're going to pass a continuing resolution by September 30th and avert a government shutdown. So by not doing it on the floor, it does allow you to continue on the continuing resolution. Exactly. It allows us to focus on spending rather than uh, other issues like the, the impeachment. Yes. So Congressman Gates today downplayed what McCarthy has done. He downplayed the impeachment announcement as a baby step, renewed his threat to seek McCarthy's removal. If the speaker doesn't come into what he called immediate total compliance with the, uh, end quote, with the deal that gave him the speakership in the first place. A, do you know what that even means? And do you think McCarthy survives this as speaker? I, I think Kevin McCarthy survives for uh, several reasons. The, the, the main one being nobody else wants to be speaker in this place. But I do think, I do <laughs> that's, think. That's not that, a great job, uh, job <laughs> description there. No, it's not. I, I, I guarantee you, you won't see Speaker Buck in, in the same sentence. But I, I do think that uh, he survives this. Uh, it's important that we uh, make sure we get funding for, for the next year. Um, and Kevin McCarthy is the only person that most Republicans are going to support in that process. You, you mentioned this. CNN is reporting that, that former President Trump spoke today with House GOP conference chair Elise Stefanik about the impeachment strategy. Is he, I mean, is, is he really the one driving this? I don't know whether he's driving it directly or indirectly. Certainly, as, as he uh, uh, participates in social media and talks about this on social media, he is driving the activists to call members of Congress and, and get involved. So whether he called Kevin McCarthy directly or whether he uh, is just uh, sort of getting the, the, the troops riled up, I'm not sure which way it happened, but certainly members of Congress are hearing about it. So what, do you, what, is, what happens now on the spending, on the, on the, the continuing resolution? Well, the first thing is we're going to try to pass a, a few uh, spending bills, appropriations bills uh, this, uh, this week and next week. So we'd like to get uh, three or four bills done by the end of next week. Um, and then we'll focus on the continuing resolution the following week. And hopefully by, the, by September 30th, we have a deal. Congressman Buck, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, uh, Congressman Jamie Raskin, ranking Democrat on the House Oversight Committee, put out a memo rebutting allegations surrounding President Biden. Quoting from a portion of it, this is a, he said, this is a transparent effort to boost Donald Trump's campaign by establishing a false moral equivalency between Trump, the four-time indicted former president, now facing 91 federal and state criminal charges based on a mountain of damning evidence for a shocking range of felonies, including lying to the FBI, endangering national security by illegally keeping classified documents, and conspiring to subvert the U.S. Constitution, and President Biden, against whom there is precisely zero evidence of any wrongdoing whatsoever. Congressman Raskin joins us now. So thank you for being with us. You heard Congressman Buck. What is your reaction to, to Speaker McCarthy launching this impeachment inquiry? Um, well, it's ridiculous, of course. Um, I mean, you've got people who voted 
not to impeach Donald Trump for inciting a violent insurrection against the union, either because they don't think that's a crime or because they don't think the evidence was there, even though the evidence was overwhelming. We did have 10 Republicans who joined us in the House and seven Republicans who voted to convict in the Senate. But in any event, you've got all these Republicans who could not bring themselves to vote to impeach Donald Trump, uh, who tried to overthrow a presidential election and attacked our constitutional order, now moving to impeach Joe Biden for reasons unstated. Now, so I think that that's absurd. I uh, applaud Congressman Buck from Colorado, who was a district attorney, who was um, the chief of the criminal division of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Colorado. He is someone who understands the criminal law and understands the constitutional law, and he knows that the whole thing is absurd. There's um, no evidence of treason, bribery, or high crimes and misdemeanors. There's no evidence of any crime at all by Joe Biden. And so all of this is clearly being driven by Donald Trump, who wants to establish this counterfeit moral equivalency between the two of them, just so he can say he's running against another impeached president. Uh, so it's, it's really silly. And they are extracting this as their price for going along at least this week with not trying to shut the government down.